Welcome to another video in a series of videos looking at Math 0100, Preliminary Maths, or so N1 Mathematics, where basically we'll be looking at um, uh, questions or solutions to questions from the second in course exam. Now, in this session, we look at question 2, and question 2 basically has to do with vectors. Now, it says that relative to an origin O, points A, B, C are Persian vectors, the Persian vectors are given. And um, they want us to deduce the vectors A, B, and B, C, and also to calculate the angle A, B, C. Part B of the question says the straight lines L1 and L2 have equations as follows. We're given the vector um, equation of the lines, and we're asked to deduce the direction vector of L1, write to the parametric equations of L2, and calculate the point of intersection of L1 and L2. So, of course, we'll start with part A. Now, we're given the position vectors of A, B, and C in a certain form, but what I'll do is I'll We'll basically express them using column vector forms and, of course, using the i, j, k notation. So, the Poisson vector O, A can be represented as O, A is equal to 3i plus 4g minus 6k. Or, in column vector form, then this would be 3, 4, minus 6. So, that is O, A. OB can also be represented in similar forms, then this would be I plus 5 minus, sorry, plus 5G minus 2K or 1, 5, minus 2. And OC would be equal to 8I plus 3G plus 2K or 8, 3, 2. Again, whichever way you're more comfortable with in expressing the vectors, you can stick to that. All right? So we have our position vectors OA, OB, and OC, and we're asked to find vectors AB and BC, which of course are displacement vectors. Now, before I go ahead into finding AB and BC, I'll draw a little vector diagram. All right? So I'll draw a pair of X and Y axes, and I'll represent two points. This is our X axis, this is our Y axis. So I'll represent points A and B. Now, these are points A and B and our origin O. So OA would be the position vector and OB would also be a position vector. Remember, position vectors always have as reference the origin. Displacement vectors usually have um, some other point as the reference. So AB, so these are position vector OA, OB and AB or displacement vector is like that. All right? Now, we want to be able to express AB in terms of the position vectors OA and OB. Now, let's say you're at A and you want to get to B, but you can't go from A to B directly. You have to go to the origin O and then from O to B. Then this therefore would mean that AB would be equal to AO plus OB. Now, OB is a position vector because its reference is the origin O, but AO isn't. But there is a way we can actually express AO in terms of OA. Now, the vector OA basically means that you start at A and you end up at O. OA would basically be a vector of equal magnitude but in the opposite direction. So basically, this would mean that because we're talking about vectors which are both which are both magnitude and direction, um, if two vectors are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, then they're basically the negative of each other, and this therefore means that AO is equal to minus OA, which therefore means that AB is equal to minus OA plus OB, and so. AB is equal to minus OE plus OB, but because you're used to putting the positive vector in front, then we write this as AB is equal to OB minus OE. Alright, so AB, the displacement vector, is equal to OB minus OE, and we can therefore go ahead and proceed to finding our vector AB in terms of OE and OB. So we have AB would be equal to OB, which I'll use in column vector form, which is 1, 5, minus 2, and this would be minus OA, which is 3, 4, minus 6. 
and of course we'll, sub we'll subtract the corresponding coefficients. So 1 minus 3 that gives us minus 2, 5 minus 4 gives us 1. Now minus 2 minus minus 6 then that becomes minus 2 plus 6 which of course is equal to 4 and therefore it means that AB the displacement vector in column vector form is equal to minus 2 1 4 but of course if you want to also express it in a form similar to this then we can also express it as minus 2i plus j plus 4k so that is a displacement vector AB now for the second part of that part of the question we also want to find the displacement vector BC in a similar fashion BC would be equal to OC minus OB so BC is equal to OC minus OB we have OC in column vector form which is 832 so this is equal to 832 minus OB which in column vector form is 1 5 minus 2 so again we subtract the corresponding coefficients 8 minus 1 gives us 7 3 minus 5 gives us minus 2 and 2 minus minus 2 becomes 2 plus 2 which gives us 4 so BC in column vector form is 7 minus 2 4 or we can write it as 7i minus 2j plus 4k. So we've managed to complete part 1 of A, which requires us to find the displacement vectors AB and BC. Now part 2 wants us to find the angle ABC. Now, when given two vectors and asked to find the angle between the two vectors, there is no confusion as to what vectors to use. However, when we're told to find an angle ABC, then we have to determine which two vectors to use. And I'll show you how we can determine which two vectors to use. Again, I'll draw a little diagram. Um, so we have y-axis and we have also an x-axis. This time I'll represent three points, A, B, and C. So this is B, this is A, and this is C. And I'll join the points to basically represent the vectors. So if you want to find the angle ABC, then that angle is right here. And you represent that angle by theta. Now, when it comes to finding the angle between two vectors, the angle is defined in such a way that both vectors either go towards the vertex or both go away from the vertex. We're interested in the angle ABC, which means our vertex is at B. And if we look at B, then which two vectors go towards B? Vectors AB and CB go towards B, and therefore the angle theta will be the angle between AB and CB, since both go towards the vertex. But vectors BA and BC go away from the vertex and therefore theta would also be the angle between the vectors BA and BC. So if we want to find the angle theta, we can do one of two things. We can use the vectors BA and BC since both go away from the vertex or we can use the vectors AB and CB since both go towards the vertex so it should matter which pair you choose as long as the calculations are done correctly you should get the same angle but in this particular case I will use the, the first pair so I will use BA and BC to find the angle between the two vectors now let's just um, examine what we had from before from part 1 we're asked to find AB and we're also asked to find BC, right? Now, we do have um, BC and we can just write it down again. So we have BC, which of course is the vector 
7 minus 2, 4 in column vector form. But do we have um, BE? No, we don't. But can we find it? Yes, we can. Remember, vectors have both magnitude and direction. And the relationship between the vector BE and AB is such that both vectors will have the same magnitude. The length of the line AB will be the same as the length of the line BC. But because they have opposite directions, then it simply means that one vector is a negative of the other. And so therefore, we can see that BA is equal to minus AB. So vector BA is equal to minus AB. And since we have AB from before, then we just multiply through by minus 1. So this becomes minus column vector form minus 2, 1, 4, which gives us 2 minus 1 minus 4. So therefore, BE is the vector 2 minus 1 minus 4. Now, when it comes to finding the angle between two vectors, this typically involves finding the dot product of the two vectors. And if you want to find the angle between vectors BA and BC, where the angle is theta, then we can see that BA dot BC is equal to the modulus or the magnitude of BA, same thing as the length of BA, times the modulus or the magnitude of BC, again, same thing as the length of BC, times the cos theta, where, of course, theta is the angle between the two vectors. So, BA dot BC equals mod BA times mod BC times cos theta. So, first of all, we'll evaluate the dot products. So, we have BA dot BC, and this would, of course, be equal to, so BA is a column vector, 2 minus 1 minus 4. So this is equal to 2 minus 1 minus 4. Dot BC, which of course is a column vector, 7 minus 2, 4. Now, before I go any further, there's something I must make mention of. Now, throughout um, math, when it comes to multiplication, students have become accustomed to using an X for multiplication. However, when it comes to vectors, these two things are not the same. If we write BA dot BC, then that is not the same thing as BA cross BC. Now, if in an exam you're calculating dot product of two vectors and you mistakenly write this, then the marker may be lenient basically, um, because this really means something totally different. This means a cross product or the vector product of two vectors. The dot product or the scalar product, as the name suggests, gives a scalar quantity, which has no direction, just magnitude, whereas the vector product or the cross product actually gives another vector. So try to avoid using a cross when you should be using a dot. So having said that, we'll continue with evaluating the dot product of our two vectors and ultimately the angle between the two vectors. So to find the dot product of two vectors, we basically multiply the, the i coefficients together, the g coefficients together, and the k coefficients together, and then we add them all up. So this becomes 2 times 7 plus minus 1 times minus 2 plus um, minus 4 times 4. And what does this give us? This gives us 14 plus 2 minus 16, which gives us 16 minus 16, which of course is equal to 0. So, the dot product is equal to 0. And basically, what does that tell us? Right? If the dot product of two vectors is equal to 0, it basically means that the angle or that the, well, the angle between them is 90 degrees. The vectors are perpendicular. So generally, if we want to show that two vectors are perpendicular, we evaluate the dot product and it should be equal to zero. So this therefore means that BE is perpendicular to BC. 
and it therefore means that angle ABC is equal to 90 degrees. So that is basically what that shows. So since that product is equal to zero, then it means that the angle is 90 degrees, right? So the angle A, 